Hello there, viewer. Prepare yourself for the telling of an epic tale of a wizard who gave his life to protect King Insanicum III. You know what this is. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. No wizards were harmed in the making of this video. Okay, thanks, bye. Today, we'll be talking about a nifty piece of hardware that allows you to connect a bunch of storage drives to your computer. There are many variations of this card, each with their own unique use cases and other things to consider like driver support and warranties and such. But right here today, I have the LSI Logic SAS 9207-8i storage controller. Yay for riveting product names. Anyway, it's a PCI Express card that has two mini SAS ports on it that you can use to expand your storage capabilities. Installing this thing is nothing new. If you've installed a PCI Express card before, you just plop it into an open slot on your motherboard and screw in the PCI bracket just like any other card. And thankfully, this thing also comes with a low profile bracket in case you want to use it in a smaller or a rack mount chassis. So what is this thing? What features does it have? Well, firstly, this thing connects to your computer via a PCI Express slot. So you'll, you'll need a computer with a motherboard that has an open slot for this. And ideally you'll want at least an 8x slot, especially if you plan on running SSDs off of this thing. So you can utilize the full bandwidth of the card. There are no external connectors, so you won't be using this for anything outside of your PC. The juicy bits though are on the inside where you have these two mini SAS ports, like I mentioned earlier. And the cunning among you may know that these mini SAS ports can be easily broken out into multiple SATA ports with these little connectors that you can find off of Amazon for 10 to $15. And I guess you can break it out into other connectors if you need so. This works by plugging the mini SAS connectors into your card and then your drives into the SATA connectors on the other end. I don't have eight drives to simulate this for you, but you can use your imagination, I hope. Now, why don't we go through what this card is not? This is not a RAID controller. There are plenty of cards just like this that do have RAID controllers, although they are typically more expensive, especially if you want faster RAID controllers or ones with features like battery backups. But since this is not a RAID controller, this is pretty much just a plain storage connection to your storage drives, just like you would plug in a SATA cable from your motherboard to your hard drive. Because this card doesn't have any RAID controllers or anything fancy getting in the middle of your operating system accessing the storage devices on this card, this makes it perfect for software RAID utilities and file systems, just like MD RAID and ZFS. Which kind of ties into my next point in that you really don't want to add a bunch of random drives to this card thinking you'll have like three drives for games, two drives for media, whatever else. You really want to have some sort of software RAID that can present the drives as one storage device to you and also handle the redundancy in case a drive fails. Now, this all falls under the data management discussion, which entails many, many things like backups, recovery, where to store things, how to break up arrays, etc. And is a very deep rabbit hole, which will be the topic of another video. But the gist of it is, for an 8 drive array, I personally would stick to something that is equivalent to a RAID 6 array, like a ZFS RAID Z2 array, which gives me two parity drives. To break this down just a little bit further, let's say you have an array of 8 2 terabyte drives. Of the 8 drives, your first 6 drives will be your storage drives, which gives you a total of 12 terabytes to store all of your games, movies, etc. Then the other two drives will contain what are known as parity bits which are basically calculations based off of the data that you put on the other six drives. And these parity bits are used in the event of a drive failure to rebuild the array in a manner that's similar to solving for a variable in a math equation. With all that said, you may be thinking, what's this for? Who would want this and like, what's the point? Don't get me wrong. Like I said earlier, you can use this in a very simple and clunky manner, just hooking up a bunch of drives to your computer uh, willy-nilly, but this card is really intended for use in a storage appliance, probably in one that you build on your own. It provides a lot of flexibility when shopping for motherboards, as then you're not limited to only motherboards that have tons of SATA ports, which can either get really expensive or just may not fit the build you're looking for. 
This card really shines when combined with Freenas, Unraid, or another similar operating system that will handle the redundancy in setting up the storage array for you. And since this card doesn't handle the raid controller duties, and that's all stored in your operating system, if one of these cards dies, it's usually just as simple as pulling the card out and swapping in a new one. Overall, this is pretty much just a neat piece of hardware that makes it a little easier to build your own NAS. Wrapping up, this card actually runs for about $83 on Amazon, and then with the two mini SAS to SATA adapters, then runs for about $107. There is actually a similar card to this one that includes the two mini size to SATA adapters that runs for about $97. But the reason I went with this LSI one over the other one was mainly due to the brand. When I'm building my NAS sometime in the near future, I really wanted to go with a brand that I could trust a little more. And I know L LSI, which has been acquired I think a couple times to Avago and then Broadcom I believe. And this other one, Siba, Saiba, whatever it is. And personally, I'm not too familiar with this Siba brand, although I have used their hardware before and it seems fine. So if you want to go with that one, your mileage may vary. And you can also find links to both cards and the mini SAS to SATA adapters in the description below. That's actually going to wrap it up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you'll like the video, subscribe to the channel, watch one of the videos down below, or just do whatever it is you need to do to make yourself feel happy. Either way, I will catch you in the next one.